All right. <laughs> Welcome back to uh, Sunday Tea Book episode 46. Holy cow, if you, uh, if you guys, all of you guys who are tuning in on Instagram and got to watch me check for, uh, I just had a little snack before I, we all, we try to have a snack before Sunday tea books because tea, you know, it kind of makes you hungry. Plus it's just a lot of energy happening here. We've got all kinds of stuff coming up. Tea trivia time. Uh, we're covering yellow tea in our current uh, book. Just so much excitement. It always makes me super hungry. So I always have a snack. So Instagram got to see me checking all my crumbs. I didn't realize we were live. <laughs> Too bad and, there's uh, no sesame there. <laughs> holy hoverboard in 2015. Time for Sunday Tea Book. Yes, yeah. hoverboard in 2015. That's a great reference. And I love Josh's uh, holy Huang Jin Gui Batman. Early again. <laughs> all right, but slightly hungover. Wicked. Uh, good job using the shampoo hour to recover. And Julia from Germany. All of you, welcome everybody on Instagram. Welcome to Sunday Tea Book episode 46. 46, holy crow. 46 Sundays in a row. Every Sunday at 1 p.m. We've been here. You've been here. We've been having a great time. What do we do at Sunday Tea Book? Why do we come here? The answer is this. Did you like that? The big already works. <laughs> Did you like that? Pause. Dramatic pause. Dramatic pause. Why do we come here? All right. 46 weeks ago, no, more than 46 weeks ago, mm. we thought um, we started to go live and just goof around and have fun. And then somebody, uh, we kind of thought, what could we do? I don't know what we did. We just came up with this idea of Sunday <laughs> D-Book. Trying to give the backstory. I don't entirely I remember like how we got started. Story. How do we get started? That. Doesn't matter how we got started. Yeah. What are we doing here is the real point. Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I take a book, paper, or an article that is full of great information and not overly accessible in the West or not accessible at all, either written entirely in Chinese or written with a... I don't want to... I have to be careful because this one's a really good translation, but there's some stuff that's lost and we think it's, it's cool to go over it. And why do we go over it live? Why don't we just post a blog or post an article with the finished... All the little fixes in it. Well, the answer is simple. Over the last six years, working with Jen, working with Chinese tea, working with Chinese tea culture, asking millions of questions about why is it this way? Why is it that way? What does this mean? What does that mean? This says it was roasted. What does roasted mean? What is all of those explanations have really added to my toolbox, helped me understand Chinese tea, Chinese tea culture, and even Chinese culture better. Understanding the language, understanding where all this comes from. So we do it here live with you guys. It also a chance, it's a, not, it's a chance for us to get help from you. Sometimes the words confound me. What's the right word for that? Once Jen explains a concept, I'm kind of like, uh, I'm an engineer, help, help. And you guys do, you help me out. So keep that up. That's basically what Sunday Tea Book is, and we're glad you're here. Igor, hello. Lolo, hello, Lolo. Hello, Lolo. I always say hello, Lolo to Lolo. Yes. I hope you don't mind, Lolo. I just love doing that. <laughs> so we're continuing today with um, tea classification in theory and practice uh, by Professor Chen Chuan. Professor so Chen Chuan, who was, also a, Professor. who was also a tea professional. <laughs> yes, Professor Chen Chuan. So uh, that's the uh, origin of what we kind of uh, understand today about uh, six T types mm. and stuff. So if you just want a quick information about what are six T types, what are the uh, ba like a basic difference between them, we have videos about it. The so link is uh, putting down below in the description box. And mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a little bit more academic reading, more having fun and have some discussions. And it's a chance for us to learn something a little bit uh, uh, beyond the basic level mm. to dive into a little um, more details about mm. what exactly are the differences between different tea types and how are tea categorized in his system. So, yeah, big time. Um, Tons of information in this document for you teeners who love that kind of detail. Mm. For those of you who are just curious and stuff, there's still some cool nuggets in there. I'm really amazed about how recent the tea categories are. Mm, Article true. published in the... Uh, in the 70s, the theory was uh, right. uh, proposed and in this paper is, mm. was published in 1981, I think, in a French agricultural magazine. Yes, yes. So anyway, just blows my mind. Tons of stuff I've been learning. Um, what are you guys brewing today? We're going to talk about what we're brewing. Mm. Um, so, but you guys got to let us know what's in your cup. What are you brewing up? 
Uh, how's it tasting? Share some tasting notes. Uh, chat amongst yourselves. We love to see you chat. Ask us questions. Uh, throw out your opinions, your thoughts. Mm -hmm. We had lots of that uh, last week and we love it. Keep it up. It was so engaging. So that is exactly what Sunday Tea Book is all about. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and today we're going to talk about a yellow tea. Yes. A little what, bit. While we sip difference. a dark tea. <laughs> yes. We're kind of a mixed match of the tea we yeah, yeah. drink vis a vis. China tea, we line them up really tight with the chapters. This one, we're having just having some fun and checking out the whole catalog and making sure it's, we have uh, lots of It's not of hard to tell who scheduled that. <laughs> when I schedule that, I schedule all of the teas I want to drink. When he scheduled that, he scheduled that according to the teas we're going to talk about. Nerd! So that's pretty good. Nerd alert. Lolo is drinking some Dongpian 2020. Nice. Awesome. Sounds good. Did you have that uh, last week too? Somehow I feel like uh, there was somebody having some. Could be. Yeah. Did we tell them what we're brewing yet? Oh, I no. don't know. <laughs> Not I don't know. Yet. Maybe we won't uh, tell We're them. brewing a dark tea today, an aged Tianjian, so I'm really happy about this tea because we have a, I noticed we have a tradition of tea starving ourselves on Monday morning. On Sunday morning. On Sunday mornings. Yeah. Right. We kind of uh, save it all up for Sunday tea book. Right. I put about eight grams. Mm, right yes. on. Uh, there we go. So, so Instagram folks on Instagram, hop on over to YouTube. Uh, they're getting a close up of the aged Tianjian leaves. Um, mm. And I'll Works. talk a bit about the format as well. We're going to pull the document up off and on, and I've got some annotations in it. So if you want to enjoy that, you've got to jump off of Instagram and onto YouTube to stay tuned and stay tuned on YouTube for the uh, for the length of the broadcast. We're going to sign off on Instagram really mm. soon if we're not already. Who knows? And um, yeah, so I think I'm going to say bye to Instagram. Bye bye. Bye bye Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> I don't know if I can say bye. It seems to be. I know. Seems to be paused. I don't know. There we go. Sharing that. Picking a random thumbnail. Oh boy. All right, guys. So yeah, we're bringing Age Tianjian here. And of course, we're going to have our traditional uh, tea trivia time coming up in just a few minutes. So. Uh, warm up your, put on your tea thinking caps and get ready. <laughs> I hope, I don't think it's a super tough one, but I think it, there's a few little curve, curve balls. Mm, that's nice and mellow. Oh, I'm going to mellow It's already up. mellow. Mm. But it's a, like, it's a really like a teasing kind a, of, you a, know, there's something there. You can... But it's elusive, huh? Yes. It's a, yes. like a light herbal, light herbal with some woody notes, like, but all very, kind of under the surface yes yeah you're right about the teasing aspect all right what tea do you recommend for me at 7 p.m there well for me igor if it was 7 p.m where i was i would be having a shupuar almost for sure i sometimes go off uh go out on the outside and maybe have like a rock tea or something but usually i'll stick with shupuar at that hour so uh and i know you've got i think you're a big shupuar lover so you probably got lots of those Sunday tea book. I'm just going to finish up with Instagram episode 46. Mm. Mm, you know, it, our, the Tianjian has a nice smoky note on the nose. The aged one doesn't, but it has the memory of it. You can almost smell that. Um, I oh, that's I nice. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm, I don't know if I can hit the mute, guys. Get ready to cover your earphones. You went away. Oh, thank heavens. <laughs> oh boy. A live sneeze is a scary thing. We don't have a, we should have a mute button here Did on the ever, desk. Don't just hit it. Did you ever get this steam kind of a, because after I brewed that, I have a little smell mm. and I was like, oh. Doesn't help that it was super dry yesterday either, I suppose. Probably. Rinse. Rinse. Okay, right on. I'm super excited. As she said, we tea starve ourselves. Time signature as usual is not drinking tea right now. But he had hojicha, uh, hojicha, a Bangladesh uh, white, blanche, white, blash, black, black, a Bangladeshi black, and oolong earlier. Wow, you had a great tea day over there. Awesome. And uh, Igor says, yes, love Shupuar. So probably well, he's I warming that. Obviously, over, uh, over brewed. Look at the counter. Mm, pretty though. 
It's almost That's sneeze. It's almost in the shupuar zone, right? It's right. tuki rate tuki. I do not want to sneeze while I'm pouring tea or anything yeah. like that. So I had to pause then. I realized, whoops. Oh yeah, and you put a pretty boss amount of mm, leaf. This is like a herbal, like a really like mm. Chinese herbs. Like yep, yep. That light that's herbal, age. pseudo medicinal, like yeah, Chinese medicine age. tile. Really nice. Let's try this out, okay? Woo! Really intensely, bro. I think that's perfect. That? Yeah, shoot it up to the camera. It's so far. Really nice. That's my cup. Yeah. She's not picky, but I'm really picky about the cup. I get the purple one. Aren't they pretty? Oh I'm pretty God. picky about this, this one. For me, it's like that. a, I want yeah. a blue one. So pretty. Right. A couple more of these still on the website if you want to go check it out. Mm -hmm. Shameless plug there. They're all different, so the pattern won't be identical. They are not machine pattern. They are hand pattern. Um, so check those hand out. Hand etched. Ooh. Hand etched. You don't feel like it's over brew at all. Mm. We, we had some road tea in the car the other day, speaking of overbrewed tea, and um, mm. we had a Taeguan Yin, and we had finished most of it, but there was a little bit of liquor left in a whole bunch of leaf, and it just sat there for like almost a whole day in a thermos. And I poured it, and the color was intense. It was a Taeguan Yin, looked like a rock tea. Okay, that's how intense the liquor color was. Mm -hmm. And you sip it, and it was like, <clears throat> really strong but mm -hmm. still we were really thirsty so i'm like i don't care i'm drinking it and i drank it and it was really strong really eye-opening so to speak and then so refreshing so mouth-watering sweet and oh, yeah, that was really good but it reminded me of um a little bit of western tea but it was tastier like the taste was better but the strength was just like ah! yeah really intense really intense Oh, Josh's uh, Shen is about to run out. Perhaps he'll switch to 2016 Bamboo Aroma. Mm. Tian Jian. Yes, do it. Do Recommend it. it. Recommend it. It's really... I thought it would be because I put about uh, 7 grams of leaves and just uh, steep that for quite a while. As you see, mm. my annoying... Not, didn't have a sneeze. But... Um, I'm afraid it's really going to come sweet. back. I'm going to just grab your microphone and cover it. But it might look wrong if I do that. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Julia says really that she really sweet. likes the... Uh, I just love oh, it's it. it's really good. Really good. No, like I... I don't you, you don't care. But based on how long I steeped that and the taste, like if I just uh, didn't uh, know that I oversteeped that, I wouldn't think this tea was oversteeped. I care. I care. It's just really good. Like you said, you're right. We should... Like the sweetness, like there's no bitterness. There's okay. no... Yes, like it's those really... A, smooth to drink. Yes, unlike the, the Taeguan Yin ridiculous oversteep, like literally, you know, we're talking eight hours in this much water with, a, you know, the full amount of leaf. This is a little, little bit oversteep. But I want to emphasize the takeaway from... Um, I want to talk a bit about high quality tea. There's a bunch of stuff I don't brag about enough, okay? So... All the tea on our website is high quality. And the great thing about high quality tea is kind of exactly what you're talking about. A lot of people get a little bit nervous when they pay more for their tea. And that's okay because you do want to do your best. You never want to, um, you know, just be um, sort of throw your hands in the air. Oh, I don't care. Of course, you want to give it care and do your best to brew it. But high quality tea is forgiving. And this is an example of that forgivingness, right? It's even when it's strong, it will be strong, but the flavors will still be really good. Um, there was something else I wanted to say, but I don't remember. I wanted to say, though, that Julia from Germany is her right. first time so. watching the stream, and she loves the little different camera angle, so then I flipped over to our oh. <laughs> Discord our Discord bumper just to remind folks if they want to join a great community of tea folks on our Discord. There's a link down below. You can jump in there. You can ask tea questions to all the different people on there. There's plenty of uh, clever and wise people who've been drinking tea for a while. Share your favorite, you know, whatever. We're, uh, it's just a fun spot to hang out. Um, so jump over there to the Discord. Um, Julia, hang on to your hat. We're going to dive into tea trivia pretty soon. That's going to blow your mind if it's your first visit. Um, right. I know I'm psyched for tea trivia. <laughs> Hand etched. Josh is like, whoa, oh my God, you guys have no idea how much of a nightmare that is to do on a glaze. <laughs> Etching in clay isn't so bad. Right, right. Oh, wow. So Josh, well, I, I have a mini idea 
Because I hand painted the cup. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, for me, cool. I don't know that. When I look at this cup, for me, it's the detail. Right, it's mm -hmm, a, mm -hmm. how complicated the pattern is, and they use shoot that. it downstairs. Shoot it downstairs. Okay. Give it to him on the brew can, right there. That because that one goes really good macro. So yes, See, like the detail oh, no, is. You're detail. right, Josh. They use the little knife, like that little tool to etch every one of those, right? So now he's got me, me wondering how they even hold the cup. Right, yeah, because right. they can't mess up huh. their other etch. They must be like, like they must have it on a circle or I don't know, like on a so wheel. So the whole thing is this kind of super um, busy, complicated, intricate. Intricate. There we go. Okay, here we go. Intricate. That kind of a pattern. So I just love that and the little tool. Like if you ask me to draw, I cannot even do it. Not to mention etch mm. it. No. Josh is throwing some, uh, you know, insider info about Because they got to remove the glaze. About glaze. Yeah, so, yeah, really wow. cool. All right, cool. Um, I think it's time. I think it's time for tea trivia. What do you guys think? Does anybody, maybe we skip it this week? What do you think, guys? Let's see if there's any comments. Probably like 10 minutes this of lag. I'm just of kidding. Course. I'm just kidding. We're not going to skip tea trivia. Let's get on with it. Let's dive in. I will explain what it is. Oh, I'm going to push the button on time this time. I won't wait till the last minute and then be kind of confused. All right, we go like that. We'll get another infusion ready. No, that the first infusion wasn't a little bit over. <laughs> it was like, a, it was a major oversteep. It was, it was a like power a shen, over steep. A medium shen you brew like a poor kind of like shu poor color. It yeah. was really supposedly intense, but all right. That's why I'm so blown away by this. Not stop talking about this. It's tea trivia time, folks. That's right. Sorry, I had to go. I already pushed the button. <laughs> All right, folks. Welcome to tea trivia time in 10 seconds. This is just a fun little thing that we do. So just take a guess. You'll see some answers up on the screen. Put the number in. Press enter. It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. We're just here to have fun. It is Tea trivia time, here we go. Huang Da Cha and Da Ye Qing are both examples of one, ANSI yellow teas, two, all of these answers, all of the above, three, Huang Da Cha style yellow teas, or four, no fat, gluten free, caffeine free, organic yellow teas. All right, just punch in the number, hit enter, and uh, take a guess, just have some fun with this one, guys. More information about the intricacies of the glazing coming in from Josh. We'll cover those in a minute. Well, see, that's just a fascinating what he said. Mm, I can't imagine. It reminded me of the time I was in the room. All right, guys, time is running out for, the, uh, for your answers, but you don't have to worry. There's still a few seconds. You can punch in your answer still, and the magical computer might still pick it up. Might not. Depends when you punch it in and hit enter. I see some answers for... Uh, Three coming in from Igor and Lolo. Mm -hmm. Josh taking some serious risks with his tea trivia time score by continuing <laughs> to chat about the glaze, which we love. Don't stop. Don't stop. But uh, don't miss your chance to answer. Time signature coming in with three. And it's a sweep nearly. Everybody got it except poor Josh. Good guess though, Josh. Good guess. And way to go, everybody. Yes, as we covered in China Tea, a in a previous episode of Sunday Tea Book, these are both um, styles of Huang Da Cha yellow, uh, yellow teas. Actually, we also covered that in our side-by-side -side tasting, which is linked down below as well. Mm. All right, next question. A key step in processing, the key step in processing yellow tea is... Is it one, browning, two, kill green, three, yellowing or humidity browning, or four, piling? So a couple questions to warm us up toward today's topic, which is, of course, yellow tea. We're at the section in the article today where we're covering uh, the tea types one by one. Last week, if you missed it, is green tea. You can check that out on our channel. It's all there. And this one will be up on our channel. Give us a couple days. Monday or Tuesday, it will show up. <laughs> Woo! Mac McMillan, welcome, ni hao. And you're just in time for question two. You still have time to get your answer in for the key step in processing yellow tea. Is it one, browning, two, kill green, three, yellowing, or humidity browning, or four, piling? Igor coming in with three, yellowing, time signature with one, browning. 
Uh, Julia, good guess with three. Lolo, guessing two. All great guesses. Everybody's rocking it. See if Mac McMillan can squeeze one in under the wire. <laughs> and Josh tried to go off the beaten path, but and great guesses, everybody. Indeed, the key step is the yellowing. Doesn't say much. Or humidity browning. More on that to come in our regular coverage. Um, but good guesses, everyone. Those were tricky. I was trying to be, I'm trying to walk that tightrope of tricky enough, but not too tricky, just so that everybody can have fun. I think I only had one where I shut out the crowd. I was not proud of myself. I felt really bad. So I never want that to happen again. <laughs> Next question. Chow Ren, the magazine we publish after our tea trips means, is it one, tea birds, two, tea friends, three, tea people, or is it four, sharing in Chinese? Nice. Four is my favorite. Cha Ren, the magazine we publish after our tea trip means, is it tea birds, tea friends, tea people, or Sharon in Chinese? <laughs> I love Time Signature's reaction to whether he got it right or wrong. Either a woo or a no. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the movie reference where the big no scream Maybe it could be Planet of the Apes with Charlton Heston. No, that's damn you. Sorry, I got mixed up. All right, a few more seconds to get your answers in for what Chao Ren means. I see some answers for two coming in. Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, T-Bird, <laughs> good one. Uh, Josh guesses three, time signature two. All right, good stuff, guys. Everybody getting on the board here. And way to go, it's an inverse of question Whoa. one. Josh gets it with T people and everybody else gets T friends. Good guesses all around. Um, that is great. Great stuff, great stuff. Uh, all right. Hmm. I'm looking for a sound or something I can put in. So I don't have, I came up blank though. So <laughs> doing production and being the host, all pretty tricky. But here we are with the next questions. Um, which of the following is not among Jian Li's credentials? Ooh, tricky one. Pretty good, right? Is it one, Chinese national tea art specialist? I put the actual Chinese there for anybody who might be interested. Is it two, Chinese tea sommelier? Check that out. Is it three, Chinese national tea tasting slash appraising specialist? Or is it four, director of International Tea Development Research Foundation? If you're into cheating, you can always scoot over to our story and cross-reference these. They're all listed there. Uh, oh yeah, Luke, it's Luke Skywalker. No, thank you, thank you, Josh, for reminding me the movie reference. Charlton Heston was, damn you, damn you all. Involving the Statue of Liberty and whatnot. All right, still a little bit of time to squeeze it in. Josh is studying a little bit of Chinese. Hopefully will help with this answer. Not seeing many guesses coming in. Hopefully it will sneak in. Oh, here they come. Four, four, guesses for four. Ooh, it's a little bit tricky. Oh, and Igor squeezes in with one just under the wire. And the one, the correct answer is Chinese tea sommelier. That is just one that I made up, but I included the Chinese and made it up too, just to try and trick you. Uh -huh. And it worked. I got a few people to guess number four. Oh, I'm so tricky. What a devil. All right, folks. Last question. <laughs> Mac McMillan guessed five. Good one. Which yellow tea was featured in our latest Jian Li tea trip video? Was it one, Mengding Huangya, two, Huang Da Cha, three, Yan Huang Zisun? <laughs> right? I knew I'd get a laugh on that one. Or four, Mogan Huang Ya. All right, guys, time's a ticking. We're wrapping up pretty soon. So do not miss on your chance to wait till the end. You'll give it away. Get your answers in and we're gonna see the, the tally up at the end. Fall into that trick. Yes, I got the trick. Josh knew it. Ah, darn, get your answers in. Which yellow tea was featured in our last tea trip video? Was it Mengding Huang Ya, Huang Da Cha, Yan Huang Zisun or Mogan Huang Ya? <laughs> There's lots of questions about what's going on. I see a wait what. I see uh, all kinds of questions, but everybody's guessing Mogan Huang Ya. Lolo throwing down Huang Da Cha. Great guess. Uh, Josh says no fair. I don't know why. 
We got to have a discussion after about that. Julie guessing Yang, Yan Huang Zisun. Time signature sticking with the Mogan Huang Ya like Josh and time signature. I oh, double guess. Oh, and way to go, Josh and time signature. Josh's uh, comment was good. You got it. You got it. And way to go, everybody. That is fantastic. I think it's great that you are. Uh, Yay. His guess about. His guess about. Oh, damn. Say this. It's a trick, and there's no such thing as a Chinese tea Somali. That's that was the <laughs> trick. That was the trick. Josh, you made the leaderboard, buddy. Way it to go. Works, right? Despite it works, his hungover. Way Wait show up her like yes, uh, Igor with two correct answers. Time signature also with two. Julie, welcome to the stream. We're so glad you're with us. Two right answers and Lolo with one. And if anybody didn't get tabulated properly, I don't know what's the matter with the computer. I don't control it. Please don't complain to me. I'm just glad you were here and that you answered and took a guess and we all had fun. That is what Tea Trivia Time is all about. It's not really about the right answer and the wrong answer. This whole leaderboard was their idea, not mine. It's just the way it goes. Um, but I hope you had fun. Um, we're going to get back to our regular programming now. We're going to dive in to Sunday Tea Book now. But first I want to see, I think maybe somebody's uh, answers got mistabulated or something. That happens every now and then. So, Oh, I think it was the trick that was no fair. The Tea Somalia trick, right? Mm. Oh, right, right. It I was so was tricky. It. Yeah, that was pretty tricky. And I even put the Chinese after it. I don't know if you looked it up, but I look up. The... That's pretty good. That's yeah, pretty okay, good. Right? That's very close. The... Guys, I don't um, speak well. I know a lot of veggies in Chinese and I know a lot of tea names, obviously, in Chinese. You make that look really like... A, yeah. Official, huh? Official. Mm, yeah, yeah. It was in, <laughs> like a Chinese national tea sonali is what I tried to write. Something like well, that. Well, how right? did you find out Yan Huang Zisun stuff? Oh, Yan Huang. Oh, so there was on the... Because um, it sounds like a Gu Zhu Zisun. It's right. So I was looking for a tricky answer to that was the that question about uh, which yellow tea was the recent video about. And I found uh, so I um, I forget how I found it, but I stumbled. Uh, I was looking for, for Huang things mm. with the word Huang in them. Anything ah. with Huang, right? Because if it's a Chinese expression with Huang, mm -hmm. it will sound like a yellow tea to me. Right. Yeah. So I looked it up and I found out a legend about uh, the legend of the Chinese people comes from this Yan Huang Zisun. And I was like, this is perfect. It has Huang and Zisun, which is Gu Zhu Zisun. <laughs> this sounds really like a T name. When you put that, I noticed it's exactly your, your way of thinking or like right, the right. sound. Yeah. yeah, so that was actually really funny. Like I would never think of that if you ask me. Mm. But when I saw that and how you put in your style of mm. answer, I was like... Yeah. yeah, and that's one of the interesting traps <laughs> with pinyin. I think in your language video, which is also linked down below, and it's a really why we link the language video in Sunday Tea Book is because Jen did a really good video on sort of some of the language differences and sort of some of the traps of pinyin, and that's one of them that you see zisun in pinyin, and you think of guju zisun. I'm a Westerner, so zisun zisun, but it could be the tones are different, the characters are guaranteed totally different, and there's no. Like you said, you don't think, oh, that has mm. something to do with tea. It has nothing to do with tea. For me, mm. I think, oh, Gu Zhu Zisun, Yan Huang Zisun. Uh -huh. No, totally do off. Do you know what that means, though? It's the, re it's the legend of the fighting emperors who are the, the beginning of the Han people. Mm. That's what yeah. I read about. I don't know what it means. The answer yeah, is... A, in general, mm. all the Chinese. Like, we have different ways to say our race or people or mm. this... Uh, uh, we just call that Yan Huang Zisun. It's mm. like uh, it's, it's not offensive, right? It's not offensive. It's just a so surprising. That's the risk that. of diving into Google. Yeah, <laughs> I, I thought that was what I was going for. I was going for surprise and a little bit like, I'm pretty surprised you knew that. That's pretty smart, Phil. Not, yeah, I'm pretty exactly surprised that you would put something so awful, but it's not awful. It's all no, good. No, not at all. I'm safe. It's, not, it's just uh, uh, those uh, sin, 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 Oh. What is that? Like the same thing. Time signature is mm. telling us that Yang Huang is also uh, a well, excuse me, I got a teeper, mm. is a well-known linguist who's written a famous textbook on linguistic pragmatics. Wow. Oh. So there you go. That is really cool. That's why the, the for Chinese is really have to see the mm. characters. Yes. And yes. the whole situation. That's actually pretty good because he has Zisun and Huang. I was like really, really proud of you for figuring it out. Yeah, yeah. Julia says congratulations to the field. I also say mm. congratulations to everybody. Awesome work, guys. 
Um, Lolo, don't worry about being last. Last is first. Everything's cool. Next time. Series hurts my self-esteem so much. This series, it is not meant to hurt your self-esteem. It is meant to boost your self-esteem, Josh. And now and you you're first top of the leaderboard, so you can dash that thought, throw it behind you. You're number one in my book. You're all number one in my book. And now it's time to get serious with Sunday Tea Book with Phil and Jane. No, that voice. My that FM voice. voice fully right. turned on. Fully turn on. All right, guys. We promised you that we would talk about um, uh, mm. a publication called T Classification in Theory and Practice. We will. We mm. promise we will. But before <laughs> we dive in, we are going to dive we in. We spend most of the time having fun with yeah. a little bit of a, a little bit of side uh, learning. I yeah, think a little bit of side perfect. learning. I think that's perfect. So, um, <laughs> so I want to just point out where we're at and where you can get because I'm not going to mm. have the text up on the win on the uh, screen full time. So if you go down into the links into the description, you will find a link to the PDF uh, on the French agricultural website. I can't remember its exact name, but the link is down there. You can grab the PDF. We are on page 339 as it's written on the page numbers in the article. It will be page 12 in uh, Adobe if you pull it up like that. But if you for maybe you're the kind that you prefer to have a printout and you've got a printout right next to you, then on the printout it will say 339. I think that's important to say. And plus, I mean, even though I'm not endorsing that you kill the trees, but I think it's kind of cool to have something to touch. I would, I would understand why you would print it out. I wouldn't judge. Um, <laughs> nice. But I don't mind if other people want to judge. That's fine too. <laughs> I'm just overly, <laughs> right? I'm just kind of making fun of those overly cautious people. Anyway, whatever. Uh, today we're diving in. Uh, that's where we're getting in. Page three thirty-nine, page twelve. Yes. And we're talking about yellow tea. Brown tea, but here it's always right. yellow tea. Uh, so before we fully uh, started today's session again, uh, I mentioned that almost in everyone, uh, every one of this um, Sunday tea book, this series, that uh, it's not to criticize how bad. The translator oh, did or stuff is just to adding uh, a mm. little bit to something, maybe something lost in the translation, maybe something that was a little bit uh, twisted because of uh, language and cultural barrier, and also a uh, li librarian, right? Librarian? Yeah, he's a librarian. And yes, and the did we field, say his name? Michael Salt. Michael Salt so translated the, this also fantastic the field job. Cross. So right. in Chinese, we say Ge Hang Ru Ge Shan means. A different industry is like a mountain away. Yes. That how, that's how different great. it is. Yeah. So uh, that's why I think uh, we are able to contribute a little bit. And by we, it's not only me, but also you guys, right? You really helped me to learn English. What does those, uh, the, the article, this English test mean to you? And help me understand uh, in your reference, what would be a better word? So uh, really welcome all the different ideas, thoughts. Don't hesitate. Uh, it's n you know it's nothing personal or or uh, or yes. cultural stuff. It's a totally uh, a very novel thing to say your mind straight up and yes. so that everybody can learn. So never hesitate. And also this uh, paper, it's uh, it's. It's originally published in China in a more professional, in a very professional magazine. So its audience... Industry was, magazine, right? So industry it's, magazine. Mm. So its audience were targeted on uh, Chinese tea professions. So in terms of that, that means there's a lot of uh, information eliminated because people are at the certain level with yes. a lot of uh, turns, tea turns and tea basics. Right. And uh, that's why we're here to help. Uh, if you want to read, we're here to help fill in those things. Maybe it's a forum or those uh, special terms, or sometimes it could be uh, very clear English, but it could be misleading, like we're going to talk about today, like dry and wet. Yes. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Yeah, and catalytic enzymes and uh, rankness elimination or kill green. Like Time Signature says, don't kill trees, but kill that green, which immediately made me think of eliminate that rankness. <laughs> More on that later. And Mac, uh, Mac McMillan, Mac, hey, welcome, Mac. Mac, uh, yeah, Mac was in the tea trivia. Awesome. Yes. Um, 
has a great question. That's a really great question. He says, mm -hmm. in China, is it yellow? So because in this document, yellow tea is referred to as brown tea. And mm -hmm. there's a few like that, you know, oolong blue tea. Mm -hmm. um, we call it yellow tea. The document calls it brown tea. We call it uh, mm -hmm. black tea. The document calls it uh, red tea, which is more, I think people are a little bit more comfortable mm -hmm. with that. Oh, and, that's interesting. And they call black tea, tea, dark tea. was uh, stuck to the Chinese version, which is a uh, Hongcha red tea rather than black tea, mm -hmm. and they use uh, and he used the red tea, but the yellow tea he used the brown tea rather yeah. than yellow. Which is interesting because that comes down to mm. Mac Macmillan's question. It is yellow tea mm. in, in China Chinese. in Chinese. So yeah. I'm not sure how it ended up as brown tea in this particular document. I don't but know. It would be interesting to ask him why. Mm. Kind of thing. You know, when people like uh, choose words, even when we translate or do things, we choose words for a specific mm -hmm. purpose. Sometimes mm -hmm. you never really. Understand. Yeah. So that's exactly the kind of mm. question we love. If you have, a, I, I just love that. that, that I, I kind of started out with that goofing around, overly mm. cautious, and don't want to offend anybody. We don't mind that at all. If you want to say something and you're, you don't agree, totally fine. We think that's great. And um, anyway, I interrupted you. But, okay. <laughs> No, it didn't interrupt me. I think that's perfect. So today we're talking about... I just about wanted to encourage. I think Mac's great to jump out with a question mm -hmm. like that. And if you... I want to tell people, you know, there's no question that if you feel like, oh, I'm just getting into tea and I'm a bit nervous to ask the question, please don't be. Don't be. Because uh, probably everybody's wondering the same thing. Or even if they're not, just ask. We're happy to answer. Don't be shy. Mm. Mm. Okay. So today's session is about yellow tea. And basically, it talk about how to how he categorizes yellow tea. Um, actually, if you are interested in yellow tea and more, we have a, a Sunday tea book, uh, China tea, about the tea, mm. about the book, China tea. The difference is here you really get to know his system and all the categorization is uh, fundamentally based on process. Mm. Same with the last week, we talked about green yes. tea, but you know, in terms of tea categorization, you really can do different angles. Mm -hmm. Harvesting time, mm -hmm. material, uh, the plucking standard or stuff. Like we talk about Huang Da Cha in the, mm. in the um, trivia, tea trivia. Talk about, oh, it's Huang Da Cha. Then we have Huang Ya Cha, Huang Xiao Cha. That's also a way of categorizing green, uh, yellow tea. But today we're talking about how to categorize in yellow tea based on its process. Right. And... So the link to that uh, China Tea episode from the old Sunday Tea book is also down below. So you can check that out if you want to dive into mm -hmm. those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in the paragraph, in the first paragraph about uh, yellow tea, he mentioned uh, uh, basically three types of yellow tea. The difference is when to do the yellowing. Oh, pull it up. <laughs> Production guy has to take cues. Really <laughs> tricky for me. Here we go. So when to do the yellowing? Mm. Sorry, is that what you wanted here? I, yeah. I wanted to kind of mention that I, I threw in humidity browning in tea trivia as well because I yes. thought that was an interesting term. Yes. Which is so basic. in Chinese, it's all called the Meng Huang. Uh, we sometimes when we talk to people, we just call that yellowing. Mm. As uh, personally, I prefer a more empty word that people won't take that more literal and mm. stop listening. So I can explain what is yellowing. So right. I, I personally like that. And here is a humidity uh, browning treatment. Browning, I think browning was a you said it was more chemically accurate term. Kind of like it's it's kind of related to enzymatic browning, which is right. which is a little bit of what's going well. It is what's going on mm. during this, um, and it, it, because it's generally with humidity, it's pretty accurate, I guess. Yeah. 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 In terms of sure. what's actually going on, but like like you, yellowing is nice because it doesn't tell anything. It's yellow right. tea. What's the main process? Yellowing. <laughs> Do you feel elucidated? <laughs> No, that's the effect. But I that's we why I just want to emphasize why you like that and why we like that is because mm. a lot of words like roasting in uh, in tea processing, everybody knows what roasting is. Mm -hmm. But once you see it in the tea processing, mm -hmm. you realize you didn't know what roasting was because it's quite a different 
it's quite different what they're doing. So it's kind of better, like kill green is a good word. Right. Right? Empty. <laughs> Enough for me. You gotta ask, what the heck does that mean? Right. So in general, dry, uh, yellowing can be dumb. So I would just use yellowing here mm. to, for easy talking for me. And it can be done after kill, right after kill green, or after uh, rolling, which can be a shaping uh, process, or uh, after the uh, tea is primarily dry. So here it translated as a coarse heating. In, coarse heating, right? In the second paragraph after right. the green light. Coarse heating uh, is a translation because Maohu is more like a tea turn, uh, not a very uh, clear if you don't know the tea process or in this uh, case it means the tea the tea is uh, pretty much done but not fully done oh. so actually no matter what you're doing as long as you're doing yellowing because before that you talk about dry vet or wet vet right. you really feel like oh this is dry this is wet it's a relatively it, there's nothing uh, if it's a hundred percent dry you just cannot uh, cannot do the yellowing anymore and no tea is a hundred percent dry there's always a, it's allowed to have a three to six percent of water content left right right and that's the finished tea and uh, for dry it's just uh, compared to the more moist level it's drier they still have at least like a 10 20 percent ish uh, water in the content to do it the just this yellow is much later yeah, I just thought the word with the word vat in it, it sounds like they use like a big, a big cauldron or a or an urn or some right, kind of bucket. Right. It's really sort of mm, not. Yeah, it's yeah. really misleading. To uh, for me, it was really misleading. So I thought, but I like the your your suggestion was just leave that as That's again funny. as the pinion. Yeah, the pinion right? version is a pay pay just me a bunch of those tea uh, material that are ready to be done. So shi pei means those material are wet-ish. Uh, gan pei means it's uh, dry-ish. It's a comparative. It's not a like absolute wet and dry. Right. It's just relatively wet and relatively dry. Yeah. And those are uh, mo Chinese tea term comes from the regions. So it's uh, sometimes it's mm. not a very like a, a scientifically prudent word stuff, but mm. it has been used uh, across and for a long time. So people understand what this special term or word yeah. means when yeah. it comes to making tea so um, maybe you guys will have a better way to translate that but I feel like a, a vat like you said it feels really container like a, it give you a little bit overly specific uh, yeah, yeah. knowledge about yellow tea when you actually see the process you're like oh it's not quite like that yeah, why is he wrapping that up right? in paper and paper yes <laughs> right and if you do want to see the process uh, I linked to our video from tea trip 2018 when we were in Mang Ding uh, they were making Mang Ding Huang Ya so you can see how um, they're making a uh, some yellow tea in that video is quite uh is very interesting right mm. Sorry. and for this My phase they just do um they kind of um if you watch it you'll see that they just wrap that and they put it uh i think they put it over they kind of tuck it around the panning area so it's mm. it the, the area is a little bit more warm than ambient yeah. and of course it's wrapped now so it's humidity is kind of trapped in that paper not overly trapped it's not like a ziploc that, bag right? yeah that's why they have to use a specific special type of paper mm. it doesn't dry out the because uh the tea needs the humidity it cannot right. dry out too much yeah and at the same time you cannot just uh, trap the moisture in that because the flavor would change right and also where to put the uh, tea last time when we were there he put that on the stove edge because that day was a little bit cool and stuff it really depends on the weather if right. it's too hot you gotta slow that down maybe you want to tuck the yellowing teas in, in the, the cooler place. Right, right. Well, if it's really cold that day, you might want to tug it a little bit more heat. So yeah, I just saw Mac McMillan say something about the dance video. Yeah, funny story about that. I tried to include it in the opening credits, but uh, I somehow didn't attach the video properly. So uh, didn't work. Maybe next time. Tune in next week, and I'll try and have that as a little opener. Hmm. That's kind of just like with Puar storage, dry storage versus wet storage. Mm. Both are quite human, different levels. Neither is really truly dry nor truly wet, just yeah, higher yeah. low. Yeah, very much yeah. like just a, 
relative terminology, mm. right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Mm. As we sip this tea, oh, something that took me a while to kind of tune into is the flavor of age. And I really, um, it's, it's, it's interesting how, I think you've mentioned this before, but, and uh, this tea is uh, not super old, but you can taste that, uh, that, I don't know how to describe it. The, the Chinese, the herbal flavor, the Chinese yeah, herb flavor. That that's mild a, herbal. That's the Asia's and signature you, taste. Yeah, and they do age. get closer to each other. Mm -hmm. Like as teas age, they kind of, this still is very much a dark tea, mm -hmm. but you can feel it's kind of drifting back to just be tea, kind of neutral. I don't know if that mm -hmm. made sense at all, but. Right. I don't know if you notice on our website, we don't, uh, we didn't put the year of this mm. tea. The reason is, uh, when we bought this tea, the, the seller is uh, saying this is the 90s tea or something, 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 but the tea is definitely not the 90s tea. You can taste that. It's around 2000, mm. right? But the price was good. The taste was good. They bluff up the age of it, which we don't agree, which means we don't know exactly that 2003 or is that 2005, right. I don't know. But the taste there is definitely in decade. So we just put aged tea mm -hmm. in our description. There are times that uh, we come across a stellar tea, but uh, <laughs> with some, uh, uh, you know, the sellers bluffing that we don't agree with the age at all but we love the tea we love the price we will still carry it but we wouldn't know yeah we won't age we won't it. just publish uh, what they said just yes. because they said it right and we're yeah. uh, we're me me and you guys are really lucky to have jen and her mom who are able to uh kind of ferret out those discrepancies and make sure that uh you know, we're, we're transparent when it's appropriate, but when it's not appropriate, we're just like, okay, we, since we don't know, we just call that aged. Mm. That's really, uh, that's something I'm working on that someday. Maybe yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not hard. It's just so Mac McMillan, um, just experience and right. keep on practicing. Mac McMillan asks, uh, what he said was the dance video. Is that the yellowing in the dance video? Oh. So the answer is, uh, no, that was that dance video was called the roasting dance so that right. was the roasting step yeah so um good question though oh i really want to watch that again but uh i don't know too bad yeah maybe next week yeah maybe next week guys <laughs> all right but you know what i mean like really smooth too i don't know are you guys uh, do you guys love ht like myself i really really love ht especially in the summer it has really calming kind of effect mm. on me not mm. a not necessarily the flavor or something like that just in yeah. general just it works like that on me i i think it's quite personal but um do you like your ht mm. good question lolo asks how hot is hot what is the approx temperature range in terms of or what is the approx range in terms of temperature slash humidity i think in terms of um i'm not sure where the oh course heating and maybe dry vat and wet vat. Or we were talking about, oh, hot day, cool day, and where they put the tea maybe? Oh, hot? You mean the, the weather? I think so, in terms of the tea, I'm not sure, because the text doesn't really have much hot, but mm -hmm. we talked about, you know, if uh, it was, he kept it on the, he kept that near the walk, because it was a bit of a cool day. Mm. It wasn't cool for me, guys. It was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty balmy, but um, it's all he relative. He wore a t-shirt. Locals wear jackets. <laughs> Everybody's wearing a jacket, right? That was in Sichuan, and I was in a t-shirt, and yeah. uh, I think even shorts. It was mm. pretty warm, especially climbing up those mountains. <laughs> yeah, the weather, mm. hot, 20 something. Uh, again, it's not ultra hot. In terms of the tea, that was cool, making, 20 something. No, no, it's a pretty warm. Oh, okay. 20 something is a pretty warm. Yeah. Sometimes in tea regions, it could be intense. Right. Like a 15, 18 degree while you have to do it. Night temperature is different. Um, right. It's not outrageously swim like minus or something, but five, 10 degree in terms of tea mm. is a big deal. If you are right. making like 
premium teas. It's very sensitive. Right. Like uh, I still remember when I first time to witness what they're doing and there's a difference. When I just watch them, they're doing a bunch of things that I really didn't realize there was a purpose. Mm. I just say, oh, this is what they do. This is what they do. But once I start to dive into those nuances, I realize everything. They're watching the weather. They're watching the fittings. So they have to watch the leaves. And in terms of like uh, exact temperature or humidity, it is something so relative to each other. It's not mm. a 20 degree. I have to put leaf like that. But what if this leaf is full of a liquid, uh, full of a water, mm. right? More plant. We have to handle that different. Like uh, this is a very, right. uh, the reason I pick, and I'd like to keep that bag is is really hard to say specific things. Like we talk about a, a tea oxidation level. This is a heavy roasted. This is light roasted. This is heavy mm. oxidized or light or medium. I think mm. that's perfect enough. Uh, some people say 20%, 40%, uh, 63%. Yes. Yeah, uh, those again, when you see 20, 46, you can actually translate that as uh, lighter, medium and heavy because right. it's not 60. It's not uh, like nobody is, there's no machine to dial that in oxidized to 60%. Right, right. Those are just a way to translate that because in Chinese, I noticed that a lot of times because those don't have and we don't want and don't use a machine to translate that in terms of uh, specific numbers. Mm. And we often get asked by uh, the Western Prospective customers, right? customers yep. or even buyers in China, they mm. ask what's the percentage and you really have to give them a, a, an uh, answer or something. So they have a ballpark. So when you say 60% oxidation level, it could be 63, right? It could be 65, just in that range right. is what we meant. Right. <laughs> well, I was just thinking that reminds me of an article in Cha Ren magazine when we taught, uh, I think it was a game with water or 2018. Anyway, you can check out uh, Cha Ren magazine. The link is also in the description down below or you can get it through our website. But uh, and after my first trip, the, so my first trip was in 2018. And, you know, I, the, all this had been explained to me, but how how these tea producers, these high-end tea producers especially, are working with so many interrelated parameters, right? So the weather, maybe it rains. So like you said, the tea might be plump, the tea might be a little dry. Have to handle that differently. The weather's cool, the weather's warm, the weather's humid, the weather's a bit dry, which reminds me in Sichuan as well. Some <laughs> strangers walking in front of us. It was like 25, 28 degrees and only 80 they literally said mm, it was 85% humidity and the guys in front of us are like pretty dry lately, huh? <laughs> right. So humid weather there. Right. So again, but they're and and I don't think they're obsessed with the exact percentages. They're just the kind of like master chefs. I don't want to like overstate it, but the guys who make really high end tea are really in touch with how their leaf reacts to their processes. And uh, it's, it's a very just interesting a really topic about interesting. Uh, mm. uh, transform the knowledge from, oh, you see it, you do it. Just like cooking, right? We say mm. warm up the uh, pan. Uh, our traditional way of doing that, to put a hand over the pan, you feel the heat. Mm. Then you go, okay, that's about the time we put in the food or not. Right. But it, for people who just get into making uh, right. food or cook, it will be really hard. That's why we have those red dots in the middle so the indicates right, the right. temperature Pots or ready. thermometer or stuff so those laser thermometers are yes. wicked it, it, mm. you can see a certain point is how efficient the knowledge can be transferred right if we can say mm. 85 degree measurable we do that it's really easy to make that right. uh, uh, you know uh, learned repeatable and yes learn, and yeah. a, a big scale while if you only have hand not the other way mm -hmm. it would be really hard for people to really understand what that feels like right. how hot it is yeah yeah right. definitely all right and uh you want to continue with that yeah let's jump back in i want to just see if there was any questions uh, for storage yeah 
And Mac McMillan agrees. He says that it's a, in Chongqing, it's the same. Everyone wears a coat, not him. <laughs> yeah. And uh, time signature. There's the roasting dance by Men Without Coats. <laughs> All right, back to the book. All right, so mm. moving along. So we're in the area where we're talking about the brown teas from Chongqing. Lots of humor. I, did, I used lots of uh, funky colors. Oh, look at that. Look at the, uh, so eliminate rankness is featured here, which is a basically just a fancy word for kill green. Let yeah. me just, uh, I got a little special something here somewhere, I think. Here we go. Eliminate rankness. That's for time signature. <laughs> just kidding, buddy. Basically, it's a funny way to say kill green. Kind of indicates what it means culturally the Chinese but I don't want to open that can of worms because it does it is loaded with sort of uh, subjective uh, subjective I think the great thing is now like in terms of the English about translating there's no norm or there's no way that has to be the way everybody is contributing mm. their stuff and yes, throughout yes. time as more use in daily uh, some turns might stay, some turns might right. el uh, eliminate it, mm -hmm. <laughs> like this, right? Uh, when this uh, article come out, I don't know if the blue tea translated here was uh, uh, like uh, the source of some cultural callback called oolong tea, blue tea. <laughs> could be from this article or other, but sometimes it didn't uh, really widespread, so most people still call that oolong. Same with eliminate rankness. That translation uh, also didn't go very popular as most of what we hear is like a kill green. Mm -hmm. And maybe in more times it will change to something else. We don't really know. <laughs> Good you, one. You saw, right? Kale yes. to you too, brother. Kale. Hail the kale. Oh, we got to send him a picture of our kale in the garden. We got some kale coming up. Mm. <laughs> Good times. Okay, so uh, a little interesting thing in the next paragraph, which is mostly about examples, right? So he uh, took two incidents about uh, special yellow teas because they have a different uh, mm. uh, process and their taste is unique. One is the yellow tea from uh, Fujian Chongan Cha Cha. Chongan is the place, I don't think they're still using it. I don't think so, but it's Weishan. Old times, so that's the generation like um, John Tianfu, um, John oh. a lot of them, Zhong Chongan Cha Cha. That tea place has a significant importance in Chinese tea history for they doing a lot of innovative wow. uh, process uh, and combine process with uh, combine the tea production with tea education. It mm. is a major uh, experimenting. Mm tea factory region right lots right. of exchanges with the uh, uh, work and academic side right, so right. It just was, a hotbed of tea innovation and tea uh, education very yeah, cool Tawai, Tawai, but uh, now i think they changed the name to just as Shan. like the Shan. yeah oh. Chuan, old time is a oh we uh Chuan. Oh, yeah. Wow, I wouldn't have known that. Mm. Uh -huh. And another example is uh, <laughs> Weishan Bai Mao Jian from Hunan province. It's mm -hmm. a yellow tea. And all times it's uh, uh, here in the translation, I think it lost the meaning of this tea's process change. It was mm. pan fried, That's then it changed to steam fried, and its uh, taste has changed too. These two teas are very unique. It actually, uh, according to Professor Chen Chuan, should be a separate uh, category. But just to simplify the uh, simplify this uh, category in process, uh, he just uh, put them all into the uh, yellowing after shaping process. Right. But here it calls rolling, which is uh, from Chinese term rolling. Literally means rolling. Right, right. Mm. So to simplify it, he stuck them in with the yellow tea. Because it still respects the it's, major... Right, the, the major, it fits. It's not yeah. like an awkward fit. It fits, but they're pretty unique and even among yellow tea because of their processes. Mm -hmm. So he did that to simplify matters. And of course, there's my favorite rankness elimination again. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Okay, so, so um, yeah, that's today's Sunday Tea Book. We quickly went through a little bit of yellow tea. I don't know if you guys were ever wondering more about yellow tea and its process. Yeah, it is a bit of one of the more elusive ones. And whenever we brew it at festivals, people are, we often hear mm. that people have never heard of it. They're, mm. they're fond to try it. Yes. Um, Huang Da Cha is a really great one for, uh, even though it's a bit of a rare or kind of a specialty tea in the world of, you know, even people who know tea sometimes haven't heard of it. I still recommend Huang Da Cha to newcomers to tea who are saying, hey, I really love coffee. What's a good tea for me to get started with? You know, it's a, it's, it's a bold yellow tea. It's not shy. It's easy to taste. Um, some yellow teas can be very delicate, like high-end high -end yellow teas are very delicate, just like high-end green teas. You want to have some tasting skills. Um, to really get the most out of those. But Huang Da Cha, you can dive in and have fun right out of the gate. I um, often recommend that. And mm -hmm. I agree with Time Signature that we should try, we should really make an mm -hmm. effort Blue to long? convert Oolong to Blue Long. Then we've got the best of both worlds captured in one tea specific term, Blue Long. With the Do you think it should have a capital B? I think it should get a capital B at that point because it's basically <laughs> a proper noun describing a very specific tea category. I think that's excellent. All right, guys, so um, we're going to keep steeping over here and keep sipping away at our uh, age Tianjian. Um, it has been, uh, I think we got all the questions, specialty, a specialty tea blue long. Mm. I think we've answered all your questions for this week. Reacting on environmental conditions defines skill. Oh, Lolo says, okay, reacting to the environmental. Yeah, yeah, that it, it kind of is. It does show the uh, immense uh, skill level. Mm. Um, it, it is mind blowing sometimes. I get a little bit like shocked, like you taste mm. the product. It's like, wow. Yes, so that is Sunday Tea Book episode 46. Tune in next week. We're not going to stop. We're not going to slow down. There's going to be more tea trivia. There's going to be more Sunday Tea Book. There's going to be more tea to steep, more tea to drink. There's going to be Blue Long. There's going to be Kill Green. There's going to be. <laughs> There's going to be everything. Mm. There's going to be the roasting dance, okay, in the credits of next week. So you definitely want to be early like Josh. We have to start and convert Josh to being, he's pretty much always early. Mm. Um, it's like several weeks in a row he's early. So you want to be early so you can catch out. I'm going to put some fun stuff in the pre-roll credits. Um, why, would that yellow better than black because of coffee? Would that yellow... Yeah. Yeah, black tea is the other one I recommend. I think maybe the question is around black tea. That's a pretty easy one to recommend, but uh, the, this, yeah, that particular yellow tea is also really good. You just want something bold. It, you know, it's just that tea has this uh, Anhui special process of uh, yes. that firing, high roasting. Yeah, yeah, and it even it gives it a bit of that, uh, I don't want to say, it has that aroma, that sort of roasting. punchiness, roastiness. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And warming. Yeah. Julia, thank you for joining us. Everybody else, thanks for joining. Mac McMillan, Josh, Time Signature, and anybody I forgot. I hope I didn't forget anybody. Um, but I thank you all for joining us. We will see you next week. Have a nice weekend. Have a great rest of your weekend. And until next time, keep steeping. Keep steeping. Keep steeping.